just kind of summarizes four ways to solve a quadratic. All right, now let's focus on this completing the square. All right, now for the most part, I think I want to do, I don't want to do too hard of ones. But that's what makes this method so hard is as soon as you have a leading coefficient, that kind of gets hard. So we'll start out with an easy one, and then we'll go to a tad bit more challenging one. Okay, um, and let's actually add a note here on this. Let's put the coefficient of x squared must be one okay so that's the kind we're going to start out with so that the coefficient is already a one so we don't have to mess with it. okay so for an easy one an x squared say minus 6x plus a 4 equals zero all right i clearly have a leading coefficient of one okay now what i'm going to do or this is just the way i do it all right the very first thing is to get that four on the right-hand side of the equation. All right, so get that four on the right-hand side of the equation. So I'm gonna minus four, I'm gonna minus four. I'm gonna do that first, okay? So then I'm gonna have, and I'm gonna line things up really nice here. I'm gonna have an x squared minus six x. All right, I'm not gonna put anything underneath here for a reason. I'm gonna bring the equal sign straight down and then I'm gonna put the negative four here. Now the whole point of why it's called completing the square is it because remember those perfect square trinomials? Okay, we did a whole chapter on perfect square trinomials. X squared minus six X plus the right number and I will have a perfect square trinomial. The trick is I just gotta figure out what this number is, okay? So I'm gonna put a number right here to create a perfect square trinomial. If I add a number to the left-hand side of an equation, I have to add it to the right-hand side to make it balanced, okay? We can't do something to the left if we don't do it to the right, okay? So I usually draw a couple lines in there. That reminds me, okay, I gotta come up with a number, okay, to put in there. Now, if you remember what a perfect square trinomial is, All I have to do is undo the formula for the perfect square trinomial. So in other words, I need to take half of this coefficient. Don't worry about the sign. I have to take half of six, which is three, and then square it. Three squared is nine. So half of six squared, and that's going to be a plus nine. And I'm going to do a plus nine over here. Okay, so I could, oh, where I wanna write that, six divided by two and then square it, which is three squared, which is nine. So that's where I came up with that. Okay, now that makes this a perfect square trinomial. So now just factor that, okay? We know how to factor perfect square trinomials, right? We take square root of the first term, which is an X. We take the square root of the last term, which is a three. And then we bring this sign down and put it in the middle. Okay, so literally, I'll put another color here. All I want to do is factor that side right there. Factor. And it is a perfect square trinomial, so I'm going to factor. Okay, now on the right-hand side, I'm just going to do the math. Negative 4 plus 9, that's going to give me a 5. All right, now what you get to that line right there, if I cover up all this other stuff, doesn't that look like equations that we've been solving this whole entire time? Okay, so that's why completing the square is in and connected to the square root property. All right, I have something that is isolated here, a binomial it's being squared, it's isolated. So now let's switch away from the red because we don't want to get mixed up with those colors that are up there. I can take the square root and do plus or minus the square root here. So now I can take the square root of both sides, okay? Square root and square go away. That's gonna leave me 
with an x minus three equals plus or minus the square root of a five. And then how many equations is that? That's two. So I'm gonna break them up. I'm gonna write my first equation as x minus three equals a positive square root of five. Okay, and then again, four. And then x minus three is equal to a negative square root of five. Just showing you that it's got two answers. I could have very easily added three to both sides to begin with, but x equals add three. So I'm gonna have a three plus square root of five, add three again, negative, or uh, sorry, three minus square root of five, get rid of that negative, because I don't know where that came from. Okay, technically right here, I could have just added three to both sides. All right, if I take, I clearly have two answers, there's my two answers. If I would have taken this line right here and just added three to both sides right away without showing all this work, I would have had X equals three plus or minus the square root of five. All right, but that's the exact same things I have here if I put those together. This is written two answers in one, this I've separated them out, it's the exact same thing. But I did this because I want you to realize there are two equations there that's giving us two different answers. This gives us two different answers. Okay, but uh, actually the completing the square part happens in those first three lines. The, the completing the square happens in those first three lines. Okay. All right, now obviously.